So after that fabulous lunch, our next stop is the uh, Seminario Pottery Factory. And besides being a pottery factory where they're going to put an awful lot of ceramic products, it's also the workshop of Pablo Seminario, a renowned potterer in uh, this part of the world. In this picture, you can see the courtyard where we uh, waited for our tour guide to come and uh, fetch us. I guess over here you can see the Cataos machines are the wheels, okay, the portal wheels. In the workshop, we have six wheels, and the other four wheels are in another area. <clears throat> so, approximate 60% of the pieces are made in those machines. As I had mentioned in the beginning, uh, this gallery is also the workshop, the personal workshop of uh, Pablo Seminario. And uh, it's our good fortune that he happened to be in today and agreed to uh, have us come up into his his uh, private workspace and talk to us for a few minutes. How are you? Good. Good. Why well, not? Welcome. Thank you. Well, I am Pablo Seminario. And this is the room where I do all these type of pieces. All this type of work. Here is the, where I do my artwork. That we began <coughs> four years ago researching on how the Peruvian native culture did their ceramic pieces. Hmm. I grew up looking at ancient pieces in Peru, north, northern coast. Mm -hmm. I grew up in that area, and I don't know why I have a curiosity since I was a child, how those very nice pieces were then. I saw all these nice pieces. Mm -hmm. Later, when I grew up, I went to Lima and I studied architecture. And I came to Cusco the year 79 for a work as an architect. But in 1979, 1980, there was a terrorist movement beginning here in Peru. Mm -hmm. So things got very bad. Mm -hmm. So, with my wife, we just decided to come to live to this side of Peru because supposed to was more easy to be through all those years. But time got worse, and I stopped doing architecture, and I began to do my dreams since I was a child on how to find the ancient techniques and to do a ceramic piece. Through the years, because this problem lasts into the middle 90s, I researched, I found ancient techniques, I, I learned from some few traditional potters that they did very rustic pieces. And um, well, when things begin to go better in Peru in the middle 90s, uh, people begin to visit that small workshop that we had years ago. And they begin to buy our work. So we begin to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow. We move from one room to two rooms, to another house, to another house, until this space that we have now. It is very big, and now we're almost 50 people working here. We have created a style. We are using almost most of the ancient techniques of our work, and the influences from the ancient cultures, and this is what you're going to see here today. Mm -hmm. But my art is becoming more, more free, more contemporary. Mm -hmm. I have different styles that I've been working through the years 
Uh, now I have a style that had to do a lot with the ancient cultures. Mm. I have a style that had to do with architecture, like that tile on the wall, that was my beginning, mm -hmm. where I had my first amount of clay, what I did, Cusco <coughs> colonial architecture, as an architect, what impressed me, what more, the Cusco, that, what you see, is how I saw Cusco in those days. Mm. Ah. I don't know what I was, uh, I wasn't mocking in those days, but I saw Cusco in that way. So... <laughs> <laughs> I thought Pablo was very interesting and I really appreciated him spending the time with us. Time for just a little bit of shopping in the gallery and then we're going back to our hotel. On the way back to the hotel, Manuel laid out our plans for dinner. Turns out Manuel knows this guy. And this guy used to have restaurants and he's now retired. But he still does a little bit of catering in his home, but only to groups like ours. Dinner was fabulous. <laughs> 